we're here on this Independence Day weekend with typical New England weather. They tell you one thing and then another thing happens. It was supposed to be sunny today. So, yeah, two o'clock? Okay. Okay. But it is, it is cooler. So that's good. That's good. But we really needed the rain. I had to water my garden this morning. So our son got the rain last night up in Bethany. They got pouring rain and thunderstorms. So, um, so let's pay attention to some of the announcements in our bulletin for today. Our prayer list for this week for members and friends of the congregation. Um, please uh, keep these people in your thoughts and prayers. Um, there's going to be a trustee meeting next Sunday, July 10th. So trustees, please um, make an effort to be there. It's important. It's a meeting regarding um, the men's restroom renovation that needs to be accomplished. Um, also, uh, just wanted to let everybody know, you know, if you have an hour, a couple hours to spare, Gardeners are needed. We have plenty of gardening out on the grounds. I come and putz around every once in a while, but it's a lot for one person. So if you feel inspired, you have some plants you want to get rid of, um, so please come on down, pull some weeds. If that's how you get your frustrations out, um, we gladly like the help. Um, and speaking of gardens, I did pick some more lettuce from my garden. There's four bags of lettuce back on the table there. I just picked it this morning. It doesn't get any fresher than that. Um, and Christmas is coming. It's July. I did order the Operation Christmas Child boxes. I ordered 200. So, Pastor Ken, we had 174 last year. So let's see if we can increase it. Let's move it on up. So those should be arriving soon. It's a great event. It supports Samaritan's Purse. Um, and uh, so we, we always look forward to that every year. We've increased our giving, our box packing over the last several years. We've been doing this for at least eight years, I think, we've been doing it. Um, Bible studies continuing on Wednesdays in the fellowship hall. And uh, that's about it. Nice light uh, announcement schedule. We do have birthdays and anniversaries, though. Um, tomorrow is Dawn and Dan Niver's anniversary. That's Doreen Murphy's daughter and son-in-law. So happy anniversary to them. And birthday's coming up. Bill Samella. Where is he? There he is. Bill Samella, July 6th. Happy birthday, Bill. Um, Pastor Ed Cherry, uh, one of the missions we support, Haitian Helping Hands, July 7th, Sarah Beckwith. Where's Sarah? I saw Sarah. There she is. Sarah's on the 7th, too. And then Brian Samella on July 9th. Happy birthday, Brian. <laughs> Isn't there another Samella birthday that week? Or... July 30th. Okay, he's at the end of the month. Yeah, okay. I thought July 8th. That's right. It... That's right, July 8th. We don't have her on the, on the calendar. Yes. Um, are there any other announcements for this morning? If not, let's please prepare our hearts for worship.
If everyone would please stand for our call to worship. In the hearing of the whole assembly of Israel, Moses said, Is he not your father who bought you? Has he not made you and established you? From, From the beginning, beginning God's, God's own people were cared for like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wings to catch them and carries them aloft. We, too, are God's own people, created and established, cared for and protected with a strong and nurturing love. Let us worship God in all his glory. Please join in singing hymn number 31, Holy is the Lord. Gracious God, you turn the shadow of night into morning and satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all the day. Lift the light of your countenance upon us. Calm every troubled thought and guide our feet in the way of peace. Perfect your strength in our weakness and help us to worship you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Let us now join in unison our prayer of confession. Father of all mercy, we thank you that Jesus came for us. Whenever we have tried to be right in ourselves, to take pride in our goodness, to be superior to others, we ask for your forgiveness. With all our hearts, we thank you for your great love and for the promise that you will never leave us or forsake us. And this promise we claim in simple faith. Hear now our silent prayers for those sins we have committed and for which we ask forgiveness. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, as we gather in your name today, we do so thanking and praising you for your goodness to us again this past week, your grace and your mercy, your love that is always present in our lives by your Spirit, and we thank you for your forgiveness available to us upon our confession of its need, and truly we are needy of that, and so we ask for complete cleansing and for a refilling of your spirit, that we might in this service worship you in ways pleasing and honoring, and leave living a life that brings honor and glory to you, and a blessing to others. And we ask and pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
So as we do the first Sunday of every month, we stand and we read a statement of faith, things that we hold in common with Christians around the world and down through the ages. This statement of faith is found in the back of the hymnal, so please stand with me and we'll read it. Um, we'll let Mary Claire cycle first <laughs> and we'll do it as a uh, alternate reading, okay? We believe in God, the eternal spirit, father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our father and to his deeds we testify. He calls the worlds into being, created man in his own image and sets before him the ways of life and death. He seeks in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. He judges men and nations by his righteous will, declared through the prophets and the apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Lord, he has come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to himself. He bestows upon us his Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. He calls us into his church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be his servants in the service of men, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. He promises to all who trust him forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, his presence in trial and rejoicing, eternal life in his kingdom which has no end together, blessing and honor, glory and power be unto him. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Well, as you pulled onto the church parking lot today, did the church look a little different? Did the church look a little bigger? With the absence of that huge oak tree that was out there, it had to come down. I have been noticing some dead stuff up there, and since I park underneath it, I uh, brought this to attention of the council and our council president. Got some estimates, one of which was a person that Paula knew. And all three of the experts said, it's got to come down. It's bad. Well, when you go out there and you look at the stump, you see how bad it was. Huge hole. And once you got up a ways, as I was here at the second day when they took it down, there was a section that was probably 12, 15 feet some ways up that was all solid. And when that came down, it made such a thud, the neighbor across over here felt it. <laughs> so all that weight up there and the big hole in the bottom, it was an accident waiting to happen in the next hurricane or whatever else. So you remember last week in my points about how to deal with the coming recession? What was the fourth point? Have a nest egg. Have a nest egg for emergency. So thankfully, through some careful management and through your faithfulness, uh, the church did have a bit of a nest egg to handle things like this that weren't in the budget. We didn't, we didn't budget this, but it needed to come down. So anyway, uh, if anybody feels like they want to help replenish that, that's quite all right, too. But uh, we got a good, a good price on it. And... Uh, uh, 
question is now what to do with the stump. For another $800, we could have the stump removed, but I think it would make a great flower potting plant out there, right? Fill it with some dirt. It's going to take a lot of dirt. And we'll get Bruce to trim off that uh, little piece that's sticking up. So we'll have a lovely flower bed out there. Uh, you, I know you love to plant flowers. Or somebody else can plant some flowers. It's going to need some dirt, a lot of dirt. So anyway, that was the fourth point. Have a nest egg because emergencies, unexpected things do happen. And uh, like I say, through your faithful giving and through careful management, uh, we, we were able to do that. So we were at the uh, Milford Bank uh, gala last Saturday night, and one of my neighbors, a businessman, noticed my Ukraine relief sign out front. He says, where do you get that sign? I said, well, I was one down at the church. I went Bowman Signs made it up for me. By the way, they wouldn't, wouldn't let me pay for it either. That was nice. That was nice. So he says, uh, I, I want to I wanna contribute. How did I do that? I said, you can always send a check. You can send a check. So uh, Mr. Smith, Frosty, sent me a very nice check. So I'm adding this to uh, the jar here. Oh, I see some other money, money showed up there. Uh, we've sent over 2500 so far to Ukraine Relief. And um, this also will be a help to that as well. And then um, we continue to collect money through the year. Uh, now we got the Samaritan's Purse shoe boxes that's coming up. So, you know, people like to have choices in where to spend their money. We like to give people their choices, you know. So you can train relief, Samaritan's Purse, shoe boxes, and, of course, the little church here down here on Broadway. And some nice person who's been attending couldn't be here today, but they sent their check. Because we got the bills, they got to be paid every week. So you can do it online or whatever, send it in. And the other thing, you know, I always like uh, when somebody goes on vacation and they send us a postcard. I know one of the boys here says, what is a postcard? What is a postcard? And Bruce said, it's a text message with a picture. That's what a postcard is, a text message with a picture. So, yes, if you're off on a vacation somewhere... Uh, for a few days or whatever, you can find some postcards that are still available. Send us a postcard. We'll find a space to put them up and share those greetings. Okay, we continue our worship through our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings.
special music today. The children can exit um, for Sunday school if they'd like now. Our New Testament reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke chapter 6, verses 46 through 49 in the large print Bibles in your pews. It's on page 79 in the regular print. It's on page 61 if you'd like to follow along. Please listen to the reading of God's word. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood arose, the river burst against the house, but could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, immediately it fell, and great was the ruin of that house. This is the reading of God's word. Thank you, Mary Claire, and and thank you for all you do. Thank you for all you do. All right, we continue our series of messages that I started last week on parables. And this is parable number two that we're covering, the wise and the foolish builders. This parable I remember very well from my Sunday school and vacation Bible school days. A very dramatic story. And like last week's study, the message about letting your light shine, the parable of putting a lamp on a stand versus under a bowl or a bushel, this parable had its own little story that uh, taught the parable in song. I'll spare you singing it, but Deborah or Lisa or Karen, they could probably sing that song for you. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The foolish man, his house on the sand, and rains came and tumbling down. You remember that song, right? Now let's look at uh, the text in Matthew's account also found in Luke's account, just read for our scripture reading. Jesus began by saying, therefore, this is in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whenever you see the word therefore, you should pause and say, why is this therefore? And that's because of what was just stated before that. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? And then I will say to them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. I never knew you. So, Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is part of the true kingdom. So that's why the word, therefore, is here before this teaching, the parable of the wise builder and the foolish builders. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, which is truth, truth that has come from heaven, from the Father, and in these parables, uh, Jesus taught, He really is teaching us about the kingdom of heaven and about the Father and wisdom from that. This parable was meant to teach us about God and about godly or kingdom living. Earthly stories with a heavenly message is the definition of a parable. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, Jesus said, is like the wise man who built his house on a rock, meaning a ledge of rock, not just a rock. The rain came down, not just a general rain. This was a real rain, one of those uh, 100-year flood ones. Out there in Yellowstone, I see that they uh, reopened. They had a 500-year flood. 
<laughs> That's a really big one. Wiped out some of the roads and all that. It says, when the rain came down, not just a little general shower, the storms rose, and that's uh, storms, streams rose, the streams rose, and that's what is called a floodplain. Mississippi River has a large floodplain, but most streams and rivers have a floodplain. Always to be considered, not wise to build in a flood zone or a floodplain. Certainly not good for permanent structures. Maybe it's uh, easy, it's convenient, it's on the level. On the level, it's, it's got good views, but when the winds blew, and again, not just a little general shower, but a real storm. So in addition to the water damage, there's always the problem of the wind damage, and that's what we were concerned about with the uh, tree out here. Uh, the water softens up the ground, the root systems now are at some risk, and then along comes the wind, and down comes the tree or buildings. That's how it goes, does it not? Wind causes as much damage many times as the water does. Well, when that happens, trees fall, root systems, of course, fail. Roofs are off, exposure. It says the wind blew and beat against the house. Beat against the house. So again, not just a little storm, but this was one of those big storms like a hurricane. We've had our share of those down here. Hurricane Irene and then uh, Superstorm Sandy. It was down from hurricane to Superstorm, but we lost like eight houses out front here. We know because all that uh, stuff showed up in our property. Remember <laughs> trucking a piece of plywood that was out here? Took a couple of you guys that carried that thing over there. And uh, Lee and his wife, we were down. We were, uh, spent all day cleaning up the grounds. And across the road here, there was a pile of debris from those eight homes out there that was about yay high and about that wide. And just as we finished dragging everything out there, they come down the street with payloaders and dump trucks and carted it, carted it all away. That was uh, 10 years ago this fall. 10 years ago. Storm Sandy, the year before that, Storm Irene. Yet, it says this man, because he built the house on a rock, this man's house stood because its foundation was on the rock or ledge. Any building, one of the most important parts of any building is what you don't see. It's what's in the ground, the foundation. And a good builder is going to make sure that the foundation is done by code and done right uh, because that's uh, what the rest of the building or house rests upon. Even though you don't see it, it's very important. The superstructure sets on that. So very important. The house stood because it was built on a rock or the ledge, not just a rock. Now, I have some experience in construction. Remember, that's what I was doing when I took that little tumble. 50 years ago, it wasn't the fall. It was that sudden stop, that sudden stop. Well, anyway, uh, fast forward to when I was at the village, we, uh, we built a uh, student center gymnasium. And uh, as the walls were going up, uh, they came and informed us that they had to stop because uh, the soil where the floor of the gymnasium was, was not of right compactability. I'm like, what? And I thought dirt was dirt, right? Well, dirt is not dirt. And so it sat there for about six months. So they figured out what they were going to do, and they had to dig all that unsuitable dirt out, cart it away, and bring in better dirt. And, of course, during that time, it rained and splashed up, so by the time I got to be the CEO, I got tired of looking. They, they never painted the interior of, they just let the cement block walls. And there was, up that high, it was brown from the dirt that splashed up. So I had it all painted. Uh, and also, by that time, we got a, uh, they had put down a, uh, a floor that was uh, this rubber floor, and it started to come up at the seams. And we actually had a, a leg broken. 
And when the DCF commissioner was there, I said, you know, we really need some money to get this fixed because you see that seam over there, it's coming, we had a leg broken. It was a piano leg, but it was a, it was a leg. It was a, it, it, they move in a piano and the piano leg out. I got $90,000 from the state to fix a new floor anyway. I did say it was piano leg, but. So yes, the dirt was just not dirt. So I learned something about those. So it's, uh, some years later now, we're, I'm there, I'm the CEO, and we're building the shelter buildings. They're like 20,500 square feet each, two stories. We found a space in the back of the property that uh, was just woods at the time. Uh, and so in creating the specs for it, I had authorized uh, the number of uh, test borings. And it said it was suitable to be built, so and we started building. And what they find when they started doing excavations for the foundations, like what we see up here for the new tide, the new tide, that's the T-Y-D-E, the new uh, catering facility and restaurant, I guess, as well, up the street. We're hoping to make good friends with them because uh, we're hoping to... Uh, have our sunrise service back up there again, okay? So anyway, uh, when they started digging for the foundation, they uncovered rocks, boulders. And you can't build on rocks or boulders. You can, you can build on bedrock. And so they came to me and they said, uh, we got a problem here. We got these uh, big rocks and we, and we got to remove them. And uh, I said, how are you going to do that? Well, we're going to dig them out, and then we're going to bring you this machine that's going to crush them. And uh, I said, what's that going to cost? $110,000. Well, that wasn't in the plan. So you always had in, when you do a building program of that size, four and a half million, you always have a contingency fund. So uh, that's what the contingency fund is. So it's something you didn't count on, right? So $110,000 to bust up the rocks and cart them away and uh, get down to where they, they could build on. So I had some experience about foundations and uh, building and construction. Uh, so as I'm reading this, I'm thinking about this story about the man who took that time and the effort to dig down deep and build on the rock, a good firm foundation. Because uh, when the storm comes and the stream comes up, Water rises and the wind blows and beats against the house. If you didn't build it right, it's not going to stand. It's not going to stand. Now, I just had a little construction project I finished in my backyard, my little mini greenhouse and uh, potting shed. Uh, I dug down some ways, and mostly I found sand. Now, there was a pool back there, and uh, underneath the pool, there was, it was a, above ground pool, 27 foot around the yeah, former Yale swim coach's house. Um, so he came off the deck into the pool. Well, anyway, it wasn't that sand. Carl thinks it's when they dug out the, the basement of the house because that's the low area in the road that sediment all over the years, they, they put, the, put it back there. So I dug down a good ways, good ways. Now, if you can buy Greg and you go to shake it, you'll notice that it's, it's very firm now because I... <laughs> I went, I dug down, really. It's going gonna, it's gonna to last at least as long as I'm there, you know, really. Uh, but very important, the wise man builds the house properly with a good foundation, knowing that storms are going to come up. And in the course of our lives, there are storms and there are other storms. And that's just a part of life, my friends. We live in a, a fallen, broken world that's not only men that are sinful, and women and people, but the whole, the whole earth has been affected. It's not like the Garden of Eden. The whole world has been affected by the fall. And that's why we have storms and all these other things. A wise man takes these things into consideration and plans for at least those 100-year storms. And you can always see the consequences of uh, construction where they keep coming up with new regulations about tying things down and all that with a roof in the building, but um, places that, uh, that don't are still in those old codes and some of the even new ones. And the whole roofs go off and the buildings come down. Uh, you see what happens in a storm. But he says uh, that's the wise builder. Everyone, not everyone, is wise. 
But everyone, he says, who hears the words of mine and does not put them into practice. God's word is eternal. We're told this in 1 Corinthians chapter 40, verse 8, that the flowers fade and the grass dies, but the word of God stands forever because it is eternal. So whoever hears these words of mine but does not put them into practice, he is a foolish man. And by the way, what is the definition of a foolish man? In Psalm 14, verse 1, it says, A foolish man says there is no God. That's the beginning of wisdom, is recognizing the deity. And a fool says there is no God. And they disregard God's word. Now, we see all about us today as you listen to events in the country and events in the world of uh, people who are ignoring the truth and the wisdom of God's eternal word versus uh, taking what is the popular contemporary thought. We just came through Pride Month, right? I have a bit of an issue with that. Behavior that's defined in the Bible as sin, and people have pride in that. I have an issue with that. Let God's word be true, and every man a liar. So, you hear a lot of things today that people give a different definition to. That's why you need to know the scriptures. The scriptures don't change with the contemporary winds of popular thought. Scriptures have been around for 4,000 years, okay? Jesus says, the person who does not put the practice, you may know it, but do you put the practice? His word. It's like foolish man. And what does this foolish man do? Well, he says there's no God. He disregards God's word. He says he built his house on a sand. Now, He's looking for a place to build. He says, oh, this is nice. It's level. It's easy to dig. It's convenient. It's cheap. It's quick. All good reasons to build right here, right? Not good, though. Not good in the long run. It might be level. It might be easy to dig. It might be convenient and cheap and quick, but not good in the long run because when the rains came down and the stream comes up, Runoff, you know, big problem. A lot of roofs today, parking lots, roads. So there's a lot of runoff. So when a big rain comes by, we're even more vulnerable today to these things because of, of that. Water has nowhere to go. Just runs off, right? And we know what it's like down here, all right? That spot right over there is the lowest spot right in the area, right? And uh, you get storm drain. The water comes up to storm drain. Supposed to be the other way around, but uh, I often call down, is there any water in the street down here? Well, if there is, it's going to be first place is going to be right out there, right? Winds blew along with the stream coming up. There's no way to control the wind, no way to turn off the wind, right? And it beat against the house. Beat against, it says it fell with a great crash. Did you see that recent picture of that big two-story house that was built next to a river? And the stream rose, and it washed away the bank, and that big two-story house became a houseboat. Right down the stream, floating down the river, no doubt came apart and uh, was found down the river in pieces. There was an example of this story right here. It was a nice place to build, good view, easy to build, but they didn't take into consideration those 100-year, uh, or 500-year floods and the risk of building that close to the road. Everybody likes to be next to the water or the view, right? But not a good idea. Not a good idea in the long run. That house that I mentioned, it became a houseboat floating down the river. Now, in Luke's account that uh, Mary Claire read, Jesus begins by saying, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, 
Remember what in the word therefore before the people that said Lord, Lord, not everybody that says Lord, Lord is going to enter in. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do what I say? If Jesus is Lord, he really is Lord. And if he's Lord, then we should do what he says. Words are not enough. It's what we do. Be hearers of the word and doers of it. Lord, Lord. Well, this Jesus said, I will show you what this is like. He is like the person who hears my word and puts them into practice. That's the wise man. Because he's building his house, dug down deep, and he built it on the foundation of the rock. And when the flood came, torrent struck against the house, uh, could not shake because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put it into practice, Jesus said, is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. And the moment, and a moment is quick, in a quick moment, a torrent struck and the house collapsed and its destruction was total. It was a complete loss. Time to call the insurance company. Hope you made the latest premium payment. Now, there's a number of verses that kind of emphasize that Jesus is the rock that we are to build our lives on. I remember when we were in Spain and we went out to the countryside out in the mountains where Reuben had, Pastor Reuben had a uh, home church. The people weren't always able to get into the big church in the uh, state capital city. And so uh, we went out there and they had a rock in it. They had painted on, Christ is the rock. Remember that, Christ is the rock? I think we took a picture. Only it was in Spanish. <laughs> Christ is the rock. What's that Spanish? Cristo es el Cristo es la roca. All right, all right. Um, anyway, here's some verses about Christ being the rock. Um, and I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, Peter's confession that Jesus was the Christ. I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. The Moses and the Israelites in the desert. This is a comment that the Apostle Paul made in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 4. And they drank the same spiritual drink. They drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them. And the rock was Christ. Christ is the rock. Peter says this. To God through Jesus Christ. For in the scripture it says, See I lay a stone in Zion. In Zion. A chosen and precious cornerstone. And the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. A cornerstone Today, cornerstones pretty much are just, you know, from their state when the building was built, dedicated, just, you know, significant, that's about it. But in ancient construction, a cornerstone was the big stone that held the, the what could be potentially the weakest corner of a, of a building. It was a large, heavy stone that held that corner in place. The Apostle Paul says this about cornerstones. Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. So my friends, the lesson from this parable is to build your life on the rock, Jesus Christ. Not the shifting sands of popular contemporary thought. Be a biblical Christian not a social Christian. Build your life on the rock, Jesus Christ, and his words, words of scripture that is eternal. That's the lesson from the wise and the foolish builders, the parable of the wise and the foolish builders. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this little story. And while it's a shorter parable, it certainly teaches us something of a very weighty nature, the importance of what we build and base our lives upon. For the storms will come, the storms of life, 
are very much a part of our existence. And we need to be prepared for those storms. We need to be prepared by building our life on what is solid, what is lasting, what is eternal. And that is, of course, Jesus Christ and his words, the words <coughs> of Scripture. All about us, we can see examples of, uh, of the foolish, the people that say there is no God or those who disregard God's work. Even some who, who yes, they say, Lord, Lord, but uh, really not doing what your word teaches us to do. They're really not basing their lives upon Jesus Christ and his words. And so help us to learn this lesson by our lives, not only us, but our families, and this little church that we might continue to be here until the Lord returns, based upon the steady, sure foundation of Jesus Christ. It was laid down by the apostles and prophets Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone, the key to the foundation of the building which he built and is being built, that of the church, that he promises that this church, his church, will be here even though the gates of hell might beat against it, it will indeed last until he returns. And so we have confidence in that. May we indeed heed this message, not just be hearers of the word, but to be doers of it as well. And we'll pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Before our time around the Lord's table today, uh, we're going to sing an appropriate song, number 315, The Solid Rock, number 315. We now gather around the Lord's table, and we call it the Lord's table because he is the one that invites us to come. And so we invite all of faith to 
join us in this time as we remember the central things of our Christian belief. That as Jesus took the bread, something that Jews have been doing for 1,500 years, remembering their delivery from slavery and bondage, for us a picture of sin. He took the bread and he said, this bread is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Lord, as Jesus took the bread, bread that he saw as representing his body, his body which would hung there on the cross, and in doing so, bear not his sins, but our sins, the sins of the world, but put him there, why he came. We remember that he bore our sin in his body, took our place, was our sacrifice. We remember that today, this element, the bread. We ask your blessing as we receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. the Lord had given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. Lord God, in your word, you say that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. For shedding of blood represents a sacrifice. It also, in the blood, represents life. Jesus was our sacrifice. He shed his blood. He gave his life that we might have eternal life through the forgiveness of sins and faith and trust in him. We remember that sacrifice in the cup today, the blood of Christ, our cleansing from sin. Amen.
As he took the cup, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of The gossip recorded that after they sang a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, where, of course, we know he prayed. He prayed all night. And we'll sing a hymn before we leave today, but now it's time for joys and concerns. So now we come to our time for joys and concerns. Um, would anybody like to start today? Linda? This is a concern. Um, Jean's husband is going in for testing for cancer, and he already was told that he probably has it. And jeannie has been suffering with a, a problem, too, that um, is not going to resolve, get resolved. So they, they both need some prayer. His name is Jim and, of course, Jeannie. Thank you, Linda. Lori? A joy of my daughter, Flora, she finally found a place, but it's not going to be in the best neighborhood, but she's moving on Wednesday the 6th. We will keep her in prayer for that move. Clint? Hi, uh, good news from Doreen. She's doing much better. Uh, she thanks everyone for <clears throat> your prayers, and so does Dawn. So um, I'll be seeing her next week. I'll stop over, bring some coffee, and uh, hopefully within a week or two, she'll be back here. Um, it was a rough go at it, but the Lord provided, and she's doing well. <clears throat> so thank you very much for your prayers. And I'd just like to say happy 4th of July to y'all, and uh, it's a special day for this our nation, the, found, the birthday of our country. Um, but just remember that freedom doesn't mean free for all. And we seem to have that issue in our nation. And this morning's sermon summed up a wonderful message that though we as Christians build our lives upon the rock of Jesus Christ, our nation also has a rock. And um, those three institutions of our government, uh, which seem to be under attack, uh, this is very serious, and we all know it. But... Um, just remember, freedom's not a free-for-all. And when we've lost faith in our leadership, we lost faith in those who govern, uh, we got a problem on our hands. So please pray for our nation that we can return to that rock that built us all those years ago and that has sustained us through the many trials and tribulations of our country, civil war, world wars, pandemics, etc. Return to that rock, please. Thank you. Thank you, Clint, for that reminder. Matthew? I'm going to go after Clint and say this. You know, I'm very happy about our government saying, you know, Roe versus Waze is overturned. You know what I mean? I do have faith that, you know, the United States can, you know, I mean, our government can do the right thing as well. Everybody's entitled to life. And I, 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 I'm, I'm very happy that decision that came down in. And that went into effect. So you know what I mean. I'm, I'm proud to be an American today. I really am, because it, it was discouraging to think that you know we'd allow little innocent babies to be slaughtered at will, and they finally have decided that you know that's an atrocity. We're not going to stand for it anymore. So I'm very happy about it. Thank you, Matthew. Anthony. Continued prayers for uh, Raymond and Myra as their countdown is on. Uh, July 11th is the uh, Plan C section for the triplets. And on the 9th, which is, well, I may get the day wrong, but Friday night at 8 p.m. at Devon UCC, they're going to be getting married. So oh, okay. Carol is coming from, um, um, from Las Vegas, travel mercies for Carol on the 8th ninth, whatever that Friday is. Um, but this is this is big. The countdown's on. This is uh, you know, it's real. 
Thank you, Anthony. We'll keep, continue to keep them in our prayers. Is there anyone else? Joy or concern? If not, let's please take these prayers to the Lord, and Pastor Ken will close us out. Yes, indeed, let us pray. So we're grateful, Lord, that um, Sister Doreen is progressing. Thank you for the care that she received and for your answers to prayer for that. We would also pray for Jean and Jim as they're dealing with uh, these tests. Uh, we pray for the best result as possible, but we commit them to you. And just ask for uh, not only your will to be done, but for you to give grace and strength and uh, health and healing uh, as, as we pray. And uh, we um, do pray for our nation. <clears throat> a lot of issues, a lot of problems, a lot of division. But yet, when we think about all the other places in the world we could be living, no doubt places where our ancestors came from, uh, we're, we're glad to be this country and for its history uh, good and bad but we thank you that there's mostly a lot of good and uh, we also pray for the challenging times that we're in that you would raise up leaders that would lead according to uh, the founders who put these things in the, the constitution beliefs that they had based upon that there was an eternal God truth of your scriptures. And now we close in this time of prayer by praying the way your son taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for now and forever. Amen and amen. Our parting hymn is number 600. Number 600 is America the Beautiful. Let us stand as we sing.
Oh, man, please be seated a moment, okay? So, the nice thing about having a birthday around the 4th of July is fireworks. Fireworks and uh, celebrations. So, yeah, we started celebrating on Friday and goes through Monday. So, yes, and I'm going to celebrate for the whole week. Absolutely. That's the nice thing about having a birthday on July the 1st. Now, one of my goals around gardening this year was to have tomatoes by my birthday. So, with interest, I was watching my garden, and sure enough, what did I find? What did I find, right? So, when I went out there to pick it, though, unfortunately, that's why it was ripe. I'm sure there'll be other ones, though. I'm sure there'll be other ones. And then I looked very carefully, and uh, lo and behold, there was another one. It's in here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There, where I got one. Another one. Okay. <laughs> I got another one. All right. Okay. So uh, this afternoon from 2 to 4, and also next Sunday, because I know a lot of people are away this uh, holiday weekend, um, we are hosting a garden party. We, yes, yes. Mrs. Fallenbaum is included. She made some of her mint tea. Uh, we're up from 2 to 4. We're hosting it now. Um, we live on Forest Road, but it, it, crazy drivers. Not everybody's got the message with five-gallon dollar gas. They're still driving. I think it's a little Grand Prix, you know. Uh, so um, be careful, uh, especially when, you, when you're leaving. Uh, I may come out there in direct traffic, but uh, there's, the parking is in the driveway and in the basketball court and also in front of the rocks. I'll, I'll park my red truck over there, so when you, you'll see the angle parking there in front of the, uh, of the uh, rocks. So, yes, from 2 to 4 this afternoon, uh, welcome to the garden party. Now, my daughter uh, found a very interesting present for me uh, for my birthday. You hang this around your neck, and it's a fan. It's a mini fan. See, that might even work on Sunday mornings, you know, with hot air or whatever, you know. So got this fan, so she was concerned about me. <laughs> yeah, she's good. Well, it's not, not, not that strong. But uh, yes, so she got me this fan, so I'm working, and I think she's concerned about her father working out there in the heat because she's also looking for uh, vegetables, okay? So you are invited to the garden party this afternoon and also next Sunday afternoon if you got plans today. Uh, a garden party. It sounds like a song. You remember that song, Ricky Nelson? One of your heart throbs, right? A garden party. A garden party. I went to a garden party to reminisce with my old friends. A chance to share old memories and play our songs again. When I got to the garden party, they all knew my name. But nobody recognized me because I don't look the same. And then there's this chorus. But that's all right. It's all right now. I learned my lesson well. You see, you can't please everyone, so you just got to please yourself. Now, Mrs. Fellenbaum said that wasn't a very Christian. That wasn't a very Christian, so I rephrased it. It's all right now. I learned my lesson well. You can't please everyone, so just please the Lord. Just please the Lord. Okay, so yes, Garden Party, Ricky Nelson, 1972. Uh, that's 1972. That sounds uh, 50th anniversary coming up in August, 1972. Ricky Nelson, remember the good old days. All right, the Nelson family. Ozzy and Harriet, in the, in those days, I missed the 50s and the 60s. All right, those of you that can remember those times. So this afternoon, you're welcome. 182 Forest Road. If you can't make it today, next Sunday as well. Garden party. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for our nation. We thank you for the freedom that we live in. And we thank you for the blessings that have accompanied it. Uh, we ask that we might not only enjoy the blessings, but share our blessings with others. Especially we think of the nation of Ukraine and the people there. And we ask for a sensation of that war. 
We ask your help to those who have suffered loss of loved ones and property and buildings. Uh, we just pray for the end of that hostility. We thank you for our nation. Help us to enjoy the blessing. And we thank you through this in Jesus' name.